talk about uh, Unity and, uh, performance in your games in Unity. Uh, it's kind of been what I've been doing lately is uh, working on uh, just improvement in performance for several games that we're working on. So I just wanted to really, I can't talk about in detail a lot of things, but uh, maybe just give you some things to look for, maybe on Unity's site or to Google, so you can kind of get more details. But here's an intro. So, um, so here's my scene. I've got like 1,500 cubes in my scene. And um, what I want to do is just kind of show you, for one, is like to see the performance of that game. So um, in the corner of your game tab, you can pull up uh, some information about um, you know, your stats. So in, in this case, it's running at 17 frames per second. So uh, we're not hitting our 60 FPS kind of goal here. Um, and let's see, so if I actually run it here, I'm able to move around. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to pull up the profiler. So this is a really cool, where is it? Ah, there it is. So profiler is a, is it over here on this other tab? So the profiler is a sort of a graphical representation of the delays in your uh, the processing the game. So if you hit play, it's going to run. And kind of you can see over there the graph. And each one of those is a frame in your game for the rendering. So, and I can kind of cycle through each frame. And, and the in this case, the green here is the rendering time, and the blue is uh, processing time. And so what I can do, let's maximize this here. So I can kind of go through the different frames and see spikes in frames. So line to be down below this 60 FPS, right? Right now it's up closer to the 15 frames per second. So what I can see is I can, I can look, uh, say, um, in this case, there's a lot of blue going on, which is a lot of processor code running. So what I want to do is look at, here's the totals. I can kind of go in this graph and expand. And there's this one that's taking 30% of the processing of the whole uh, frame. So it's, of course, my intentionally horrible um, bad code over here. <laughs> so let's see. In this case, it really doesn't matter, but I'm just looping over you know, this 10,000 or 100,000 times and changing the position. I'm not even changing the position. I'm just changing the, <laughs> assigning it back. So there's all kinds of reasons. Well, this is pointless code, but um, you know, it slows it down just because you're accessing the the transform object a, a bunch of times. So if I just take that out, because it maybe doesn't matter anymore, uh, it's not really doing anything. So it's going to recompile here. And in this case, I've you know, intentionally made a really bad code. But uh, in your case, when you're actually using this, uh, you can identify which piece of your code is, is taking up all your time. So as you can see, now I'm way way closer to my uh, 60 FPS goal here. Um, all that blue is gone, basically. So uh, that's one thing is the profiler. So another thing is to look at rendering. So uh, a really cool way to do that, the um, frame debugger. So if I click it here, again, everything keeps coming up on this other screen. So the frame debugger lets you kind of see all of the commands that are going to the graphics card. So the draw calls is that a call. So in this case, um, let's see. I'm going to where did my mouse go? So here are all the draw commands that are going to uh, the graphics card. 
And so as you can see, I've got what, 1,700, 1,800 draw calls. And as you can see, this is sort of all the commands as it's drawing. So these are doing stuff like lighting passes. So it's kind of doing lighting. And it's doing once per cube. Remember, I had 1,500 cubes. And then so as you can kind of see, let's maybe do page down. There's so many. It's sort of drawing the whole lighting pass for these cubes. And there's a draw pass where it's drawing each one of these in, right? But you can see each one of these is a command that's happening. So ideally, you want to have as few of these as possible. You want them to send I, you know, one command, say, draw the whole scene. But that's not possible. But you can reduce it to as many um, as you can. And so this tells you what's happening, how many they're uh, processing um, are happening. If you're writing custom shaders, you can see the passes and all that. So this is a great way to see that. In my case, um, one of the things that I could do is these are all uh, not marked as static objects. So that if you mark things as static, so I'm going to, I put all my cubes under one parent here. So I can check static on that and then change all my children to be static. So Unity is able to do additional um, improvements to the performance if you say this is static and doesn't move around. And it's always going to be here um, this in the same place. So like your maybe your trees or your mountains and stuff, your walls in a, in a building are pretty much usually static. And, and um, they can uh, get improved performance by marking that as static. And so now, if I run this again, all right, so let's see if I can click the Enable button again. And now I'm down to 23 draw calls. Because what it does is, you can see the static batches here. It's able to combine all of those static objects into one or a couple big objects, essentially, and draw them all at once. So it's like, there's a few, and then it draws all those in. So that's, you know, ideally, you want to have as few of these as possible. So one trick is to mark things as static. Um, another is like with lighting. When you, when you have things as, as um, static, you can, um, you can bake that lighting in. Lighting is really expensive. So um, baking and lighting is one thing to explore. Uh, I won't do that now because it takes forever to, to bake. But um, there's all kinds of options with, with uh, playing with that and improving performance. And then the last thing was, say, occlusion calling. So occlusion calling allows you, the renderer, to um, decide what it's going to actually uh, basically pre kind of compute the, the, the lines of view, the view lines. So if I'm looking in this direction, sort of what things am I able to see? So let's go back here and let's close the frame debugger profiler. So window, let's go back and see the scene. OK, so here's my scene. Here's all these objects. And what I can do, that's actually clear. So I can bake. When I have the occlusion calling, you can kind of see where it builds this the, a set of cubes so that when it runs, it's actually um, kind of determining the, the line of sight. And so normally, what it does is it actually disables those objects um, when, when it's viewing. So uh, based on that, it calculates what objects are visible, and it actually sort of disables the rendering of those objects. So uh, it kind of breaks down your scene into those cubes, kind of, and says, can this cube see this other cube, and should those things be active? So it's another thing, inclusion calling, that um, can help with performance, especially, say, if you have lots of complex things uh, in different rooms, and really you're never able to see you know, them at the same time. You can turn on or use inclusion calling to eliminate that whole you know, other room that's not visible at this time. So. All right, so those are some you know, ideas for performance and with your game in Unity. Um, definitely, there's all kinds of resources and videos on uh, Unity's site, or you can 
ask me questions. But I think that concludes this month's Run Jump Dev meeting. Um, let's see. So definitely uh, follow us at Run Jump Dev Dev.